Rahman Rahim, uh, dear students, welcome to my lecture number uh, 44. Uh, before starting my lecture, um, as we know that uh, we have started this uh, uh, lecture series uh, due to uh, COVID-19. So, as we know that uh, the conditions is almost uh, very critical and um, due to uh, some unfavorable circumstances we are unable uh, to access uh, to come in front of you uh, so before starting my lecture uh, that's why uh, we have started this online uh, lecture serial and uh, all these uh, lectures so they are important for all kind of student all medical students mean including uh, BSN uh, MBBS, Form D, and uh, Paramedical. So uh, we can enjoy this session. Uh, dear students, uh, before watching my lecture, subscribe my channel, watch it, and like it. So okay, let's take a start. Today our lecture is uh, about uh, uh, drugs for respiratory disorders. Now what are the different type of agents or drugs which are used in the treatment of respiratory disorders? This is your core subject use. So in this chapter we will cover all the core subject use uh, which are mentioned here. Uh, define antihistamines, decongestants, antitosio and expectorants. Last the drug groups that are used for COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma. Uh, explain the therapeutic effects, side effect, toxic level in nursing consideration and calculate the drug usage accurately while administering oral and parental medications. Uh, now come to our uh, the major topics uh, which I am going to cover that is antihistamine, decongestant, antitoxia and expectorants. Now what are antihistaminic drugs? As we know that those drugs uh, which are responsible uh, to relieve the runny nose, sneezing, itchy or watery eyes and nose or throat itching. Actually antihistamine, these are those drugs uh, which can block the secretion of uh, histamines and histamine these are the chemical substances which are responsible uh, for uh, allergic type of reactions and that allergic reactions may be in the form of flu it may be in the form of sneezing that may be in the form of itchy in watering eyes uh, and as we know uh, that uh, histamine uh, they are secreted by the uh, basophil and uh, mast cells so uh, how these uh, uh, histamine secretions uh, uh, will be blocked so the symptoms uh, may be due to happy fever and upper respiratory allergies and common colds a uh, common antihistaminic drugs which i have mentioned here and bracket you will see this is the trade name and this is the chemical name so brompheniramines maliates and dimethines so as we know that chlorpheniramine maliates like cetrazine dihydrochloride which is available in the market by trade name Zytec one is chlorpheniramine maliate, chlorotrimetrons and chlorpheniramine maliate uh, like uh, uh, there are many drugs uh, which are available uh, in the market so uh, evil evil injections uh, Clemestine, uh, Trivest, they are available so in a market by Tradem, Trivest and Dipene Hydromines, uh, Benadryl and Pexopenadine, Electrin and as well as Loritidine. So all these are the antihistaminic drugs which are used for uh, what? For the treatment of whenever there is uh, access uh, quantitative production of uh, histamines. Uh, now come to our decongestants. So decongestants are uh, these are those drugs or these are nasal decongestant is a type of pharmaceutical drug that is used to relieve the nasal congestion and the uh, upper respiratory tract. The active ingredient is the most decongestant is either pseudopyrrhine or phenylephrine, the latter of which is disrupted effectiveness. Uh, now come to our these are them some classical examples of decongestants which are mentioned here: Zephrine, Restron, Vexenex 
and uh, soda fats and sophedrines, uh, selfedrine and soda fat and sophedrine, sodopedrine, phenylpedrine and oxymetazoline, xylometazoline. As we know that there are different type of decongestant drugs. Uh, so I can take a classical example uh, that is rhinosone or xynosine, oxymetazoline and xylometazoline. So that is available in a market as we know that and spray uh, and the form of spray so that is called oxymetazoline and xylometazoline which is decongestion so decongestion actually are those drugs which have the capability to what uh, the which can relieve the nasal congestion especially in the respiratory tract whenever uh, for example whenever there is blockage at the level of your nasal cavity so whenever, when your nasal cavity and whenever there is nasal con de uh, nasal congestion jagar so uh, different uh, decongestant drug are used in order to relieve this condition uh, anti tosio agents so uh, these are the medicines uh, uh, which have the capability that can suppress the cupping which is also known as cup suppression uh, as we know that anti tosio these are thought to work by inhibiting a coordination region for cupping located in the brain's stem disrupting the cup reflex and although the exact mechanism of action is unknown uh, for example there are two types of over the counter uh, cup medicines so anti tosian expectorants um, so uh, you know that uh, uh, cup are two type uh, the first one is productive cup the first one is uh, the second one is dry cup so expectorant actually uh, they are used for the uh, product to cup whenever there is sputum especially uh, during cupping a common intitusio agents which is uh, dextromethorphans and some brands named like uh, Tramenicold, Encuff, so dextromethorphan you have seen some prescriptions uh, of the physicians uh, dextromethorphans like uh, um, many and more drugs especially hydrolines uh, pulmonals and many and more uh, ruby to scene cup and vex 44 cup and called the only expectorant available in otc product that is gone up scenes and two brands they are available that is uh, mucinex and uh, ruby to scene that is uh, especially in chest congestions uh, expectorants uh, these are those medications that helps uh, bring up the mucus and the other material from the lungs bronchi and trachea an example of expectorant is going to be seen which promote the drainage of the mucus from the lungs by tanning the mucus and also lubricate the irritated respiratory tract uh, the examples are uh, bidex 400 going to be seen and i said uh, X and organidine and rnp must potassium iodide so these are the examples of expectorants. Uh, common respiratory disease that is asthma, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and allergic rhinitis associated with persisting cough. Uh, as we know that asthma is a chronic disease characterized by hyper responsiveness airway and COPD uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease including pyosim and chronic bronchitis, uh, allergic rhinitis that is characterized by the itchy watery eyes, uh, runny nose and non-productive cup. Uh, coughing is an important defensive respiratory response especially to irritants. Uh, and has been cited as the number one reason why the patients seek medical care. A travel uh, cup may uh, represent um, several uh, etiologies such as the common cold, sinusitis and underlying the chronic respiratory disease. Uh, respiratory conditions can be controlled through appropriate lifestyle changes and medications. So especially uh, the upper respiratory tract infection and lower respiratory tract infection and these ca cases they are usually so they are common especially uh, whenever the climate condition change and the temperature become down especially in cold uh, conditions. You can say the chances of respiratory uh, infection so they are more as compared to uh, whenever uh, the condition or the climate condition is hot. Uh, drugs can be delivered uh, topically uh, to the nasal mucosa and especially they are inhaled into the lungs or given orally or parentally for systemic absorptions. Uh, local delivery methods uh, such as nasal spray, 
are inhalers, uh, they are prepared to target the affected tissues while minimizing the systemic side effect. Uh, clinically useful drugs uh, mitigate the specific pathology and such as by relaxing the bronchial smooth muscles or modulating the inflammatory response. Uh, as you know that uh, sometime uh, you have observed that the patient who have have a problem of cupping or the patient who uh, who have a problem of cupping uh, and as well as uh, some allergic reactions so uh, that patient is using certain type of medications mean in the form of syrup so uh, the person he or she should use uh, a cup syrup uh, along with the uh, anti-allergics so anti-allergic this is very important anti-staminic drugs uh, like loritidine, desloritidine, clodpinramine, miliate, so it can be used in a combination whenever a person uh, who is uh, uh, suffering from, you can say, uh, coughing. Uh, local delivery, delivery methods, so clinically useful drugs, uh, uh, so they mitigate the specific pathology, such as by relaxing the bronchial smooth muscle and modulating the inflammatory response. Uh, dear students, uh, come toward the uh, disease. Uh, now you know that asthma so um, asthma is the inflammatory disease of the airways characterized by the episodes of acute bronchial constrictions causing shortness of breath cup chest tightness wheezing and rapid respirations so as we know that uh, asthma is one of the inflammatory disease and with the airway uh, system so it become disturbed and bronchial constriction is occur so your bronchioles it become constricts and especially the blood supply and the oxygen supply to world tissues so they become unable to reach there uh, there are some uh, and uh, uh, asthmatic patient uh, uh, you may observe there will be shortness of breath, uh, there will be coughing, chest tiredness, so wheezing and rapid respirations. The symptom may uh, revolves, resolve this spontaneously with the non-pharmacological relaxation exercise or with use of quick relief medication such as short acting beta 2 adrenergic agonist. So the drugs which are used in the treatment of asthma such as like short acting and long acting beta 2 adrenergic agonist. Uh, as we know that a drug may be agonist or drug may be antagonist. Now in this case, the problem is that bronchial constriction is occurring and there is shortness of breath. So what you will do, agonist uh, will be used and these agonist can uh, uh, cause bronchial dilatation. So bronchial dilating agents, bronchial dilating agents, they are used, especially in this type of cases. While there are uh, some cases, especially in asthmatic patients, which are genetics, while some cases there occur with the uh, mean with the passage of time, uh, especially uh, uh, like uh, asthma is a chronic disease with an underlying inflammatory pathophysiology. If they are untreated, so it may cause airway remodelings, resulting in increased severity and incidence of exacerbations or death may be occurs. And death is usually occur uh, relatively infrequent. Significant morbidity results in high cost uh, and numerous hospitalization and decrease the quality of life, especially uh, death disease. Uh, it can decrease, it can directly, it may directly affect the quality of life of the patient. You know what are the goals of therapy? Whenever we are going to treat the asthmatic patient, so first of all, you will have to reduce the impairment. Where impairment is occur, so uh, reduce uh, by reducing impairment. So uh, we should do by decreasing the intensity and frequency of asthma uh, symptoms. We should prevent the chronic and troublesome symptoms. So the person required infrequent use uh, that is less than or equal to two days. A week of inhaled short acting beta 2 agonist for quick relief of symptoms. Uh, we should also maintain the near and the normal pulmonary functions. Uh, we should also maintain, we will also maintain the normal activity levels, meet the expectation of the patient and family. Uh, the second uh, goal of therapy is to reduce uh, the risk. Now, how we will reduce the risk? 
by decreasing the adverse outcomes associated with asthma and its treatment. Prevent recurrent exacerbations or excitations of the asthma and minimize the need for emergency department visit or hospitalizations. Now we are also responsible uh, to prevent the progressive loss of the lung function and for children prevent, reduce lung growth and provide the, you should provide the optimal pharmacotherapy with minimal or no adverse effects which I have already discussed that how you should uh, reduce the risk. The problem is that that we should reduce the adverse outcome associated with the asthma and the treatment and you should all the patient and you should know you should overview all the past history present history so each and every everything should be on the record as we know that this disease is inflammatory so whenever there is inflammation uh, occur in the asthma, so the ear flow obstruction in the asthma is due to bronchioconstrictions, which I have already discussed that a patient who have the, uh, for example, a, a patient who have asthma and the uh, that asthmatic patient, so there must be bronchioconstriction at the level of lungs and there will be occur the contraction of the bronchial smooth muscle. So the smooth muscles, the bronchial smooth muscles, they become contract and they can uh, directly inflame the bronchial walls is a result of which can increase the secretion of the mucus. Asthmatic attacks uh, may be related to the uh, recent exposure to antigens or inhaled irritants leading to bronchial hyperactivity and inflammation of the airway mucosa. The symptom of the asthma may be effectively treated by several drugs but no agent providing care. Uh, now come to work. Uh, some important predictions. Uh, the role of phenotype and asthma. Recent research demonstrates that a link between beta 2 receptor polymorphisms, poly mean different and morphism mean chef. So uh, the recent research demonstrates a link between beta 2 receptor polymorphism and response to long acting beta agonists for 16 to 20 percent of the asthma patients. Three asthma uh, phenotypes have been reported uh, that homozygous glycine and heterozygous glycine arginine and homozygous arginines patient with the homozygous arginine polymar polymorphism so maybe at the risk for worsening the symptom with long acting beta agonist and the clinicians prescribing any new long acting beta agonist prescription should be counsel the patient to carefully monitor the symptom for the signs of the worsenings why the condition is going to work worse if the patient reports worsening symptoms the long acting beta agonist therapy should be discontinued with the subsequent increase in corticosteroid dosing is clinically uh, appropriate Now look at here in this table, uh, classification of asthma, uh, one is intermittent, uh, mild persistence, mild, moderate and severe. So there are different type of cases uh, which, are, uh, which have been reported. So especially an intermittent uh, case of asthma, uh, asthmic attack, the bronchioconstriction episode that is less than two days uh, per week while in mild cases more than two days per week and they are not daily so bronchioconstriction is occur in uh, episodes while in moderate cases this bronchioconstriction that is uh, on daily basis while in severe cases this is continuous result of peak flow or spirometry so that is an intermittent case that is near to normal while in mild persistent that is near to normal while in case in moderate case so uh, that is 60% uh, uh, to 80% of the normal while in severe uh, persistence so that is less than 60% of the normal uh, especially in intermittent so the long-term control is 
uh, no daily uh, medications while in mild persistence low dose uh, should be given in moderate persistence low dose especially in ICS and mean that the uh, long acting beta agonist or medium dose should be given and severe persistence uh, the medium dose is you can say the medium dose and long acting uh, beta agonist while uh, high dose can be given especially in severe cases whenever in moderate cases low dose should be given to the patient while in severe cases the medium dose should be given to the patient and intermittent uh, uh, take of asthma uh, quick relief of the symptom short acting beta agonist should be used while in mild persisting short acting beta agonist should be used while in moderate persistent short acting beta agonist is used but in severe cases uh, we you, you can also use the short acting beta agonist for what purpose in order to show the quick pharmacological action what is ICS ICS is inhaled corticosteroids while LABA LAB that is stand for long acting beta 2 agonist so it can activate these receptor and cause vasodilate uh, bronchodilatations not vasodilatation that is called bronchodilatations so the bronchioles it become dilate uh, first line drugs used to treat the asthma so first line drugs which are used and the treatment of asthma that is adrenergic agonist and the second one is corticosteroids if you have remembered i have already uh, delivered a lecture on corticosteroids that uh, what are the uh, pharmacological therapy how corticosteroids they are used like prednisolone and uh, many and more drugs like some of the so on so corticosteroids so i have already explained in my previous lectures uh, epinephrine is a drug of choice for the treatment of acute anaphylaxis and status asthmaticus this is the best choice epidrines alternative drugs they are also used to treat the uh, asthma that that may be in the form of leukotriene antagonist uh, chromoline cholinergic antagonist thiopylene and omalizumab now what are adrenergic agonist uh, adrenergic agonist uh, uh, are those drugs these are inhaled adrenergic agonist with beta 2 activity or the drug of choice for the mild asthma the direct acting beta 2 agonist are the potent bronchodilator that relax the airway smooth muscle quick relief and short acting beta 2 agonist for the long term control so these are adrenergic agonists these are the drugs which are used in the treatment and the management of asthma As we know that uh, uh, adrenergic agonist that can give quick relief to the patient, so most clinically useful beta agonist have a rapid onset of action, almost 5 to 30 minutes and provide relief for 4 to 6 hours. So they are used for symptomatic treatment of bronchospasm providing the quick relief of acute bronchoconstriction. For example, albuterols, USP United States Pharmacopoeia, Salbutamol. So you know Salbutamol, this is the drug, INN, that is used, which is available in the market by trade name Ventolines in the form of syrup, in the form of injection, sorry, in the form of, you can say, uh, in the form of spray. So a beta 2 agonist have no anti-inflammatory effect and they uh, should never be used in the sole therapeutic agent for the patient with persistence asthma because there is no anti inflammatory effect as we know the beta agonist yes uh, uh, they may be in the form of salbutamol so they are used ventoline so there are different type of drugs which are available so monotherapy with short acting beta 2 agonist may be appropriate for the patient uh, uh, patients identified as having intermittent asthma exercise induced uh, bronchospasm uh, adrenergic agonist uh, it can give quick relief to the patient especially the uh, uh, look at here these are the adverse effects which are reported by the uh, uh, literature uh, review adrenergic agonist so it causes tachycardia hyperglycemia increase the glucose concentration in the blood hypokalemia may be occur uh, mean uh, potassium depletions potassium level in the blood become low hypomagnesemia in the magnesium uh, low level of magnesium in the blood so they are minimized in delivery via inhalation all the patient with asthma should be prescribed 
uh, is a quick uh, relief inhaler and regularly assess for appropriate inhaler technique. Uh, inshallah, in my next lecture, so I will talk about the, inshallah, we will discuss in detail about the adrenergic agonist and how it can be controlled, what is the long-term control, that was the short-term control and long-term control, how the long-acting beta agonists, they are used like uh, other agents, cell meteorols and for, and for motorols. Uh, thank you so much for watching my lecture. Uh, with full attention so I need your f feedback so uh, you know, I'm waiting uh, for your special feedback so if you have any question regarding uh, my lectures so I'm always available for your services uh, on YouTube on WhatsApp so you can directly uh, contact with me thank you